through the peephole, trying to see what the man was doing on the porch. I expected to see him just sitting there, shivering in the cold. But what I saw instead was unsettling. The man was standing up, pacing back and forth, and he kept glancing towards the door. His demeanor seemed anxious, not just from the cold, but as if he was waiting for something or someone. This made me feel uneasy. The situation was already unusual, with him appearing in my backyard during a blizzard and now waiting on my porch. His behavior now added another layer of concern. I wondered if I had made the right decision by not letting him inside. It was a tough call to make, especially when someone seemed to be in need. But something about this didn't feel right. I decided to play it safe, holding the old jacket in my hand. I opened the door just enough to pass it through without fully unlocking it. Here's a jacket to keep you warm, I said, trying to sound as calm as possible. The man took the jacket, muttering a quiet, thanks, but his eyes kept darting back to the door. I closed and locked the door quickly, then moved away from the window. The whole situation was making me increasingly anxious. I couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to this than met the eye. I went back to the living room, but I couldn't focus on the TV anymore. My thoughts were fixated on the man outside and what his real intentions might be. I decided to check the peephole again. This time, the man was no longer on the porch. The jacket I had given him was neatly folded on the chair, as if he never intended to use it. I felt a mix of relief and confusion. Where had he gone so quickly in this blizzard? And why leave the jacket behind? For the rest of the night, I remained vigilant, occasionally peering out the window half expecting to see the figure wandering in my backyard again. But as the hours passed, there was no sign of him. The blizzard continued to rage outside, and I was left to ponder the strange encounter, wondering what the man's true story was, and whether I would ever understand his presence in my backyard on such a stormy night, around frantically, and noticed two other figures emerging from the shadows of the motel. My heart was pounding as I realized I was not alone in this seemingly deserted place. The men started to approach my car, and I knew I had to act quickly. Without wasting a second, I started the engine and turned on the headlights, illuminating the men's faces. They shielded their eyes from the bright light, which gave me a moment to put the car in reverse. As I backed out of the parking space, I glanced in the rearview mirror to see the men regrouping and discussing something among themselves. I didn't stop to think about what could have happened if I had stayed asleep any longer. I just focused on getting away from there as fast as possible. The snow was falling heavily now, making the roads slippery and dangerous. But I was more concerned about getting a safe distance away from the motel. Eventually, I found another motel a few miles down the road. This one was well lit and had several cars in the parking lot, which was a reassuring sign. I checked in, making sure to park my car in a well lit area close to the entrance. My hands were still shaking from the adrenaline as I carried my bag to my room. That night, I barely slept, my mind replaying the events at the previous motel. It was a stark reminder of how vulnerable one can be when traveling alone, especially in unfamiliar and isolated places. The encounter left me more cautious and aware of my surroundings, a lesson I carried with me for the rest of my trip and beyond. Then I'd head home. The drive was slow due to the snow, but I was used to driving in these conditions especially with my dad's truck. The neighborhood, as expected, was nice with well-kept houses and large yards, 
all covered in a thick blanket of snow. I arrived at the address, which was a house at the end of a cul-de-sac. It was a two-story house with all the lights off, which wasn't too unusual given the late hour. I grabbed the food and made my way to the front door, stepping carefully on the snowy path. I rang the doorbell and waited. No response. I rang again and knocked, thinking they might not have heard me over the storm. After a minute or two with no answer, I checked the app to ensure I was at the right house. Everything matched. I decided to call the customer, but the call went straight to voicemail. This was starting to feel a bit off. But sometimes, people fall asleep or have their phone on silent, especially late at night. I waited a few more minutes, debating what to do. Uber Eats' policy for situations like this was to wait a bit, then leave if there was no response. Just as I was about to leave, I heard a noise from the side of the house. It sounded like a door opening and then shutting quietly. I paused, feeling uneasy. Something about this didn't sit right with me. I decided to leave the food at the door take a picture for the app, and get out of there. As I was walking back to the truck, I glanced over my shoulder and saw a figure standing in the window, watching me. I couldn't make out any features, but the silhouette was unmistakable. It sent a chill down my spine. Quickly, I got into the truck and locked the doors. As I started the engine and began to drive away, I saw the front door of the house open and the figure step out onto the porch, just standing there, watching as I left. The whole way home, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It was one of those deliveries that I'd remember for a long time, not because of anything particularly dramatic, but because of the eerie feeling and the unanswered questions. Who was watching me from the house? Why didn't they answer the door? I was relieved when I finally got home, deciding to call it a night and hoping for less unsettling deliveries in the future. Reacted instinctively, jumping back to avoid his reach. The sudden movement startled him, and for a moment, he seemed just as surprised as I was. Hey, what's going on? I asked, my voice edged with anxiety. The man didn't respond. Instead, he just stared at me, clutching the bag of food. I took another step back, wanting to put more distance between us. My mind was racing, trying to figure out if this was just a misunderstanding or something more sinister. Is everything okay here? I asked hoping to get some sort of response that would help me gauge the situation. The man finally spoke, his voice rough and low. Just leave, he muttered, almost under his breath. It was clear that he didn't want to engage further, not wanting to escalate the situation. I nodded and quickly walked back to the truck, glancing over my shoulder to make sure he wasn't following. Once I was safely inside the vehicle, I locked the doors and took a moment to catch my breath. My heart was still pounding from the encounter. It was one of those situations where you don't realize how scared you are until it's over. As I drove away, I couldn't help but feel uneasy about what had just happened. The man's behavior was odd, and the whole setup with the notice on the door and the lights off in the house was bizarre. It didn't seem like a typical Uber Eats delivery at all. I decided to report the incident to Uber Eats once I was home and safe. They needed to know that one of their drivers had felt threatened during a delivery. It was important for the safety of other drivers who might deliver to the same address in the future. The rest of the drive home was quiet, and I found my thoughts returning to the man and the strange encounter. I wondered if there was more to the story than I knew. Maybe he was going through a tough time, or perhaps there was a reason for his behavior. 
that I couldn't understand. Whatever it was, I was just relieved to be heading home, away from the unsettling experience. The experience you had was undeniably harrowing and would understandably leave anyone feeling on edge. It's concerning that the man pursued you with such intent, and the fact that the house was unoccupied at the time adds another layer of mystery and unease to the situation. It's fortunate that you were able to react quickly and get to safety. Your decision to call the police was the right one. Reporting such an incident is crucial, not only for your own safety, but also to alert authorities to potential dangers in that area. The fact that the house wasn't currently owned could imply a number of scenarios, including the possibility that the man might have been squatting there or using the property for some illicit purpose. Thank you.